Okay, so I'm going to do um, two examples uh, with Gauss's Law. There might be two videos or one. Let's just see how long it takes. So, Gauss's Law says this. So this says right here, um, if you take some closed space, it doesn't have to be real, okay? It could just be fake and most of the times it is. And then you integrate the electric flux over that surface, which is uh, E dot n hat. n hat is a vector pointing away from the surface, and dA is, a, is the uh, area element, okay? Because those things can change. All those things could change over the area. Uh, if you do that and do it for the whole complete, this means a complete surface area, then <coughs> that flux is going to be equal to the total net charge inside that area uh, divided by epsilon naught. So let's look at a plate from the side with positive charge on it. And we already did the electric field due to one single plate. So this is another way to get it. Now you may be angry afterwards to see this is easier, but I'll tell you this, there's a trick. Okay. So the trick is to say, I have to already know what the shape of the field looks like. Okay, so I can't use this if I don't, if I don't know something about that. Uh, so in this case, I know that if the, um, if the charge is uniform and it's really big and I'm close to the plate, then the electric field is going to be constant and pointing away. This is, this is not a line, this is a plate, okay? So, but I, I've only shown one dimension of it. It's like that. So constant electric field all the way. Okay, so it's a really big plate. Now, in order to apply this, I have to pick a surface, a volume. I have to pick a, some shape of volume over which to do this calculation. Then the key for using Gauss's Law effectively is to pick a shape that makes things easy. You don't want to pick things that make make it hard. For for instance, if I picked, let me draw it up here. If I picked uh, a sphere like that as my volume, that would be a poor choice. Why? Because uh, it, even though the electric field's constant on the surface in magnitude, in hat at different areas on that change. So how would I do that integral? It wouldn't be so easy, okay? Because you have to integrate over this surface area, uh, even if E is a constant magnitude, E dot n hat changes, so it wouldn't be easy. You, you could do it, it's not, it's not undoable. It's just not very smart, okay? So let's choose something smarter. I thought I had a blue marker. Oh well, okay. So let's choose a uh, a cylinder so it's like that and it's got uh, <clears throat> let's just I'm, I'm just going to make it as simple as possible it's going to be a cylinder let me redraw the cylinder it's like that so and this is the area a and a length L okay um, a lot of books call this a pill box I, I if that makes you happy, okay. So now, if that's my surface, I need to do this integral over that whole surface. Well, it's really three discrete sides. I have this whole cone. Let me show you. You know, if this if this was my cylinder like that, then I have. Hey, there you go. Then I have this end right there. I have the whole side I can treat as one piece and this end. And so I'm going to have really three fluxes. So the net flux is going to be equal to, uh, I'll just call this uh, phi 1 plus phi 2 plus phi 3. And so this is the, uh, this is 1, 2, 3. Okay, let me start with uh, phi 2. It's going to be equal to the integral. Now, it's not a closed integral, right? Because I'm just going around that 
one surface area. It's not the whole thing. So it's just going to be e dot n hat da. Now, I'm not, I don't want to integrate because I want to make it such that this is simple. But if I if I look at my side piece right here, and anywhere along there, n hat is that way. Down here, n hat is that way. Right here, n hat's coming out. Okay, so it's always perpendicular to that surface area. Uh, but e is that way. Here, e is that way. Here, e is that way. Another side, e is that way. But in all of those cases, e is going to be, if I call this the x direction, e is going to be in just the x direction, either positive or negative. n hat's going to be in the y, z plane. So when I take e dot n hat, they're always perpendicular, so I always get zero. So this whole integral just becomes zero. Think of this as rain. If it's raining this way, how much rain hits the side of that? None. Okay. So phi 2 is simple. Now what about phi 1? Now we have this n cap over here. Now there's e. And n hat is the same direction, and it's constant. They don't change, right? Over that whole surface, the direction of the area doesn't change. So if I do phi 1, it's going to be uh, e, which is constant, magnitude. So I'm going to bring out that. And then I have x hat dot x hat, right? They're both in the same direction. So I get 1. And then I have dA. So now I just have to integrate over this area. But I just have the integral of the area. So I just get the area. Well, that's not a vector, right? Because I took the dot product. So I get e a. Now I need to do uh, phi 3. What's different about phi 3 is now the, if I'm on that side of the plate, uh, the electric field is going this way, but so is n hat. So e is in the negative x direction, n hat's in the negative x direction, so I still get the exact same thing. So now if I put all this together, the total flux is going to be 2EA. Now I just need to find out how much charge is inside there. Okay. Let's say that um, maybe I shouldn't have used A. Okay. Well, let me say the whole plate, you could do this two ways. Let me say the whole plate has an area of... Um, a prime. I, I should have. I shouldn't have used a, but and a charge of big Q. Then, if I assume the charge is uniformly distributed, then I should say that the charge in here, inside that little piece right there, is going to be. Uh, I'll just call it lowercase Q. Lowercase. Lowercase Q over a would be the same ratio as the total charge over the total area. Q over a prime. So uh, the Q inside is going to be equal to A Q over A prime. So if I put that in up here, I get 2 E A equals A Q over epsilon naught A prime. These A's cancel, and I get the magnitude electric field is going to be Q over A prime over 2 epsilon naught. That's the magnitude of the electric field near the surface of one plate. And remember, in a capacitor, we don't have that 2 because we have two plates next to each other. Okay? But that's, that's the electric field. And, and you see that we didn't have to do any complicated integration. But we did lose something. We had to sacrifice something. In this case, we had to sacrifice ideas about the direction of the electric field. This is the magnitude electric field, not the electric field vector. When we did it before, we broke this into essentially little pieces and treated each one as a point charge, and, and we got the direction. Okay. So in, when you use Gauss's law, you have to already know something about the direction. Um, so you can't really, it's not necessarily easier. It's easier if you already have an idea about what you expect. Okay, that took longer than I wanted, so I'll stop, and then I'll do uh, a, a thin line of charge 
uh, I'll use the same idea.